Hello Makers, today's project is my potting shed featuring the new facades and stacking strips from Tim Holtz and Stampers Anonymous. I got to make with the house shape and I used a whole bunch of the stacking strips which I think are one of my favorite parts of this whole project. I didn't realize how versatile they are so I'm super excited to talk to you about this project and uh, talk about all the details at the end but first let's get started with uh, what I used and my process in making this and then we'll wrap it up. I think I've said before that I really love the etc line from Tim Holtz and Stampers Anonymous and so anytime that there is an addition to the etc family I am thrilled and I was so excited when I heard that we have a new addition with this release of stamps from Tim and Stampers Anonymous and so this is the etc facades. Now you get four different facade shapes that can go either on etc tags or they can go on uh, vignettes or whatever else your mind dreams up. Uh, and they also come with 24 stacking strips. Now the stacking strips are as thick as the etc facades. It's cut from the same pressed board and they are just a bunch of thin little strips. Now, some of the, like the, the Halloween um, strips, the bats and the uh, webs have some strips like this, and they help you give dimension to the trims and the different things like that. And so it's wonderful, wonderful to have a whole piece of 24 of these with each of the facades. Now, the reason that they come with the facades is because, well, first let me show you the different shapes. I, I know you've probably already seen them because at this point you've already seen the release. But again, there's this shield shape and they all come with that center area cut out. So you can use this center piece for something else or you can just toss it, whatever you want to do. I would never toss it though, because this is nice for even if you just cut it up with your scissors and use it behind things to give things dimension like you know like you would a piece of chipboard or something so don't throw it away you can always use it or this would make a really cool you know like coaster art or something like that wouldn't it so uh you it's like it's like you're getting eight pieces actually but there's this really great shield piece that i imagine with like moose antlers or something coming out of it when i when i first saw it that's what i thought of then there's this wonderful kind of modern arched shape with a square opening. There is this pointy arch shape, kind of cathedral arch, or I thought this would make a really great pennant, you know, for a banner or something if you used it this way. And then the one that I'm going to be working with is kind of a house shape, but if you turn it this way, it could also be a pennant. And if you didn't take this out and you just wanted to use it this way, and then put something on it. Uh, I think that's really cool. So anyway, something to think about. Okay. And actually, if you did, you could do kind of three if you did it this way. And you just put paper over and you didn't punch those out. You could have a really fun banner that way with the facades. But I digress. I am working with the house. Uh, I'm using it as a house like this. And so I will not be using that piece. Now I could, if I wanted, put it on a tag like this. And if I were doing that and I wanted even more dimension, I didn't want it to be so flat, that's what these are for. And so you can cut them and trim them and you just put them on here so that it goes behind the edges and then it just pops that up and gives it some dimension away from the back. And you can layer them as many times as you want. You can layer them all the way around if you wanted to put lights behind it and have the lights, you know, so that they didn't shine out. And that way you can use these. You don't have to use, you know, so much of your maybe foam tape or whatever. These will glue together very quickly and easily. And so you can, you know, layer two or three or four, however many you want to have this, you know, raised higher off of the back. You can, like I said, you can also use them on vignettes and that is what I'm doing. I am using this on one of the large vignette boxes 
And I thought it would be really fun to kind of make this into a potting shed because it is spring. And, you know, in springtime, I just get into, you know, things like plants and all that kind of thing. So I'm going to make this into a little potting shed. I'm going to cover it with some paper. And the paper I'm using is from the new uh, palette volume five, I believe. And this was the neutrals volume four of the backdrops. And so I'm going to use the this color on the inside of the vignette. And the pink is going to cover the outside of the vignette and the facade. So I'm going to do that. And then I actually thought this would be fun is I'm going to go ahead and put it on a large tag. So right now I need to start covering the box, covering the um, facade and the outside of the box. So I'm going to get started doing that. And I'm going to invite you to come along and make a facade, etc. potting shed with me. I have my paper cut and so I thought I would go over how I do th do this just in case you haven't made one of these before and you aren't sure how to get the paper on the box, the tag, the facade and all of those things. So I had a piece of my backdrops paper and I used the darker pink one that has this pattern on the back of it. So this is just a sample to show you how I did it. Took my facade first because I needed to get several pieces out of this. And so if I just went and just cut, I was afraid I was going to not have enough left over. So I thought this was the best way to do it. So I lined it up just as close to the edge as I can get. You don't want it to go over the edge. So if you still see a little bit left, that's okay. You can sand it or trim it off. Then take a pencil draw right along the outside and draw along the inside so that when you lift it off, it has the shape of the facade and then go ahead and cut it out. And I used my craft knife and I cut, I started uh, and just did a couple of the straight parts with the craft knife and then I finished it off with my scissors so that it fits right on the facade. And I will attach this with some collage medium and a brush a little bit later on. Make sure that it's completely attached to it and then let it dry. Once it's dry, then I usually sand the edges a little bit because I don't like that raw look right there. And then I will ink them, okay? Now this will then go on to the box. So let me talk a little bit about the box in a second, but because it's gonna go on the box, I wanted to make sure that the sides were covered with the same pink paper, but the facade's gonna be on it, so I need to include that in my measurements, okay? So you don't wanna measure just the box, you need to measure it with the facade. So I held the facade in place, and I took and I measured how wide it was, and then I measured how long, and once I got my width and the height, I went ahead and cut my pieces so that it would be sure that it was wide enough that it covers that raw edge. Now it's a little bit wider and that's okay. I'd rather have it a little bit wider uh, than not because I can always, I like I said, I always sand and so I can sand off anything extra and then I will ink the edges. Okay, so I did one for this side and then I have a second one for this side. And then because I'm gonna put it on this tag, I wanted one for the bottom. And so I did not have enough because what ended up happening was once I cut this, I cut my piece here for one side. And as you can see, there's not enough to cut another one. So I had to cut it from here. And then there's not enough to cut for the bottom. So if you cut from the middle of this part right here, you will have a piece that fits the bottom. Okay, so but you have to go from the middle and you'll have just enough for the bottom of the box. All right, so you can get all of these pieces out of one piece of the backdrops paper. Now let's talk about the inside of the box. So the inside of the box is easy. I just cut with my uh, trimmer, my little guillotine trimmer. 
and you want to start with the center part first and so you want to measure the inside and then you'll trim and what I did was I trimmed it the width this way and then you just trim off a little bit because this is six inches wide and I think it was like five and I don't know something like five and a quarter or something like that okay so you're just going to trim off that little bit that's left to get that to fit in there now sometimes after I measure it's still a little too long and it will bow and so then I'll just kind of very slightly trim off just a little bit trim off just a little bit until it fits nicely inside same thing with these I went ahead and measured so you measure this way and then you know measure that way again this way this way and you get your inside measurements and then you can trim trim you know trim until you get them to where they will fit and I wanted all of the inside covered so if I put the top and the bottom in first then these are going to need to be trimmed just a little bit uh, to make way for that paper on the top and bottom but you get the idea so I will trim these sides just a little bit before I actually adhere it and then this will go on here and then I can start putting paper on the sides as well. All right, that's how you cover a facade and a box. Okay, and the tags, you can do all kinds of things with. You can do collage paper. Uh, these small tags will, uh, you can use a whole piece of the backdrops. They do fit on here and you'll have a little bit that you can just kind of trim off or you can paint it. Um, just whatever comes to mind, lots of mixed media type things. You could put fabric, all kinds of things that you can do on these. All right. So leave that up to your imagination, but I am going to begin covering the box. I take a minute to talk about where I'm at so I do have the base tag covered with the beautiful backdrops paper from volume 5 I have the facade covered I have not covered the sides of the box yet because I need to put the stuff in the inside of it so I did cut some etc pink etc trim I layered it into two layers 
and I made some small what could be shelves so I can do one of these on each side if I want to make little shelves on the sides then I have the long shelf in here uh, which I kept and it fits pretty snugly I haven't even actually glued that in yet I used some little leftovers uh, from trimming the the shelves to make a little crate so I used the stacking strips and I cut them and made sure they were all the same length and then just glued them on the ends. And so this is one of those little fussy things you have to kind of be sure that you get it held properly. And then I didn't put anything in the bottom because I'm just gonna sit it in here and just have some stuff kind of coming out of it like you would in a potting shed. Uh, I pulled, I just started pulling some things. So I pulled this one, a compendium of curiosities. And I thought that could kind of go on the bottom here. Um, then I pulled some of these. These are older ribbons adornments that uh, I like. And I thought, you know, I might put one up there or just maybe like this. Not sure yet. I pulled some of the leaf adornments. And that could actually go up there. It could go in here or the bee from the insects. So just started pulling things. I, of course, got my thimbles that I'm going to turn into some terracotta pots to go in here. Have my bunny, some flowers. I will also add the bloom flowers, the paper flowers. I also grabbed uh, some vials and then some tiny corked vials. So I have some of these that I can make into little, I don't know, vases or something that might go in there. I even pulled this. I think this is too big, but I thought it might be if I put like some kind of plant or something in there, I could maybe move the shelves over like this and then sit that like that. So anyway, I have a bunch of ideas. And then I thought I actually might make this old and stick this kind of just in the back like it's something that I would maybe use. Um, like this is kind of potting shed slash storage shed where I have a lot of things that I might use in my garden or in a gardening display. And then I have this left over from several years ago when I made a, a different style of potting shed for ideology for CHA or creativation. And I turned the silverware into little potting shed tools. And so I will also do that to make kind of like a little scooper uh, with the spoon. But this was supposed to be a little, you know, one of those little forks for gardening. So I pulled that out because I don't throw things away. So I saved that. Anyway, just pulling things that I thought kind of have a garden feel that I might, you know, sit around in my little potting shed. While things are drying here, uh, I have painted them with a layer of hickory smoke distress paint, and then I'm going to kind of dry brush some picket fence over it. I think I might stamp on this to kind of give it, you know, an authentic old crate look, and then I'll sand it down a little bit, sand some of the, the white paint down so that it looks kind of like old painted wood. Uh, and then I have to put some grit paste on this. Then uh, probably a little crackle paint paste on this so that I can put it on something and it'll look kind of old and painted and crackled. Which brings me to my old crackled rabbit. So here's how I made that. I took one of these. And then I painted it with several coats, just like this, of hickory smoke, distress paint. And once it was dry, so uh, I painted it once, let it dry, painted it again so that it was nice and covered. And then I just took my finger and some uh, opaque crackle texture paste, and I took it and I just wiped it all over. And I even had a little paintbrush to get in between everywhere, make sure that I got the crackle paste all over. And this of course was attached to a stick so that my fingers weren't you know, going back over it. And then 
I ended up with this. And I think it looks great. And I did go through and chip off some of it so that the paint showed through. And it would look like kind of an old, I don't know, I've seen them in, you know, magazines and things like that. But just old, you know, statues and uh, garden ornaments that were painted white and kind of plastery. And it's crackled and broken off and the cement is showing through underneath. And that's kind of the look I was going for and I really love it. So that's how I achieved that look. And I actually did it in my faux sugar eggs uh, tutorial and then ended up not uh, using it. I decided I wanted to use it for this. So anyway, that's how you turn this into an old plaster garden ornament. to put just a little detail on the crate and so I pulled this stamp strictly handmade from the inspector stamp set and I'm gonna try and stamp strictly on there and I might be able to put hand or made maybe made um, so I'm gonna stamp it in Uncharted Mariner because I think that it will go with the paper on the back kind of okay once I sand it down. So let's see if I can do this without completely messing it up.
painted the thimbles with some rusty hinge and I kind of roughed them up a little bit with some sandpaper. Now I am going to wash them with some Picket Fence Distress Paint and then I'll be adding a little crackle paste to these to make them kind of, uh, I didn't want to do a lot of the green mossy look like I did on my last potting shed. I want these to kind of have that whitewashed look like some terracotta pots have. And so that's kind of the look that I'm going for with these. We'll see if I can achieve it. very happy with how they turned out. This is exactly the look I was going for, kind of an oxidized terracotta pot. I've seen these in garden places just for years and years, and I just really love the look. I think it's different. I, I like how subtle the terracotta is underneath that white oxidized layer. And so really simple to get just paint your thimbles with rusty hinge distress paint once they're dry i roughed them up just a little bit with very light sandpaper and then went ahead and brushed on that layer of picket fins and kind of wiped it off with my fingers and there you have it oxidized terracotta pots it's grit paste time so i'm going to just add some grit paste here and there where i feel like maybe a few things need it. And then the main thing that needs it is my little potting shed kind of, uh, I don't know, is it a spade? So to make it look less like a spoon and hopefully a little more like a spade, I just took some needle nose pliers like this and then against the glass like that and turn it. And then I did it the other way. So I held it here. And then, hello, Exitensio. He has been in and out all morning while I've been working on this. All right. So I tried to make it a little more spade shaped doing that. And then you won't really see that. I'm going to cover it with the grit paste, like this one's kind of covered with grit paste to make it look kind of old. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that on this. And then I will use these to trim off the fancy part here. And it's about at there. That is about where I think I trimmed this one off. Then I just wrap some thread around it. And then I added my grit paste and I think I put just some, uh, it looks like I just put a bunch of collage medium around the thread to make it look like an old kind of handle on there. So I'll do the same thing on here. And then I'm thinking in my potting shed that I might hang these off of some tack nails like that. So imagine that one's shorter. But anyway, hang them up with some tack nails on each side so that they are ready to pull off the shelf and, you know, put some things. This is why I can't get anything done. Can you hear him purring? He has such a big purr. And look at these feet. Huh? Yeah, you make it hard for mama to work. Yeah, I had to stop to stop and pet you all the time. Yeah, and I can't do that if I have grit paste all over my fingers. He's a sweet orange uh, Maine Coon mix that was one of our foster kittens. And he got very sick and thankfully he survived. As a very, very tiny like six week old kitten, he survived. And so we're so happy about that. And we are glad that he's part of our family. So I wanted to show you how I age the inside of the box once I get the paper in. And so I went over 
it very quickly with some walnut stain and then I spritzed it with my water and you can see that I just added some more color to an already colored background so I didn't really have to do that much work but you can see that where some of the collage medium kind of went outside and onto the paper that it's not coloring it because distressed ink is resisted by the collage medium so I took and I took a little bit of my uh, this is ground espresso. You could use walnut stain, whatever. Um, distress crayon, and I'm picking it up with a uh, water brush. I'm just brushing it into corners, and I'm not very careful. Just want to get it in there. Get a little age going in the corners and you can see I still have some things drying where it looks like the water kind of ran down So that's how you go ahead and age the corners and things like that once you already have the paper in. It's a really quick process and you don't need to belabor it. That looks fine. Now I'm gonna start just adding a little bit of age to all of the other elements that I have in here. So I wanna add just a little bit of brown here and there to some of them. So I'm gonna do the same thing with my brush I already have the crackle on there and you can see when you're adding it you don't really have to worry too much and you can just if you get a little too much just add some water and wipe it off All right, so I'm gonna just keep aging these, but now you can see how I do that. And um, I'm just gonna continue with all the rest of the things I have here. Let's update just a little bit. I do have the shelves in place. I have a little, uh, one of the vials that I, I stamped and then I put a rub on on it after I had put paint and texture paste and all that kind of thing. Here is the bunny. I just had a little jute around the bunny's neck, stuck him on there. Uh, the gate in the back, you can see, has a lot of texture on it. Here's that little crate that I made. And then I put, I made one more pot and I just stuck those in there. They're still drying, so that's why they're moving. And then I have some of this that I got at the hobby store years ago. It's just some moss. And then usually I wet it with my spr water spritzer, just, you know, spray some water on it and it will poof up and become kind of pliable. And then you, I just kind of just stuffed it in like these had been shipped or something like that. So those are kind of sitting there. Uh, I was thinking of putting this here somewhere in the center maybe. And uh, I'm still gonna put a few flowers 
around and then I kind of thought um, I haven't decided where I'm gonna put this yet and I kind of thought I might make this kind of look like a little stone thing that I would attach there and then I decided I might try this and I don't know if it's gonna work but I got out my baubles because I always buy extra baubles and bubbles when they are released for the holidays always get extra holiday stuff because you can use it throughout the year just like see just like the bunnies you can use it throughout the year so I don't know if this is gonna fit there okay it will so here's what I thought might be kind of fun to do with this bobble is to make some of those green balls that you see kind of in garden sections they're like they have moss all over them but moss is a little bit too big for the baubles and I might want to make a couple and, and kind of set this one in here and then maybe just have a couple piled over in a corner and some flowers somewhere else so I'm thinking I'm going to probably paint them all forest moss green let them dry and then do the technique that uh, Tim was showing us to turn the salvage rabbits into the little mossy rabbits. And I have had this since I made Toad Hall uh, with the Village series a couple of years ago. And it's like a green powdery substance that is used in trains and miniatures for making lawn and turf, uh, you know, areas. And so once I do that, then I'm gonna use this just like I would glitter. I'm gonna put it in a little cup. I'm gonna put some collage medium on my fingers, roll it in that, and then I'm gonna dump it in, and I'm gonna swirl it around, see if I can make a little mossy, kind of little mossy ornament things. I think that would be kind of fun for my little garden shed and add a little bit of color. Everything's pretty plain right now. And so I'm going to make sure that I have some color in there, a little bit of green and a little bit of color in with some, some florals. So I do need to add that now. So let's just go ahead and give this a try and see if it works. several things. I got the bee put in the top of the box. I went ahead and added the little moss balls. I put the mini flare in the bottom down here. And so now I need some florals. So I took a couple of the little bouquet sections and I talked about this in my tutorial for the book nook, but these bouquet flowers are kind of wrapped in a little cone of tissue paper. And so as you can see right here, it's got a little tissue, almost, they can almost be leaves. And so I kind of untwist it and then I start pulling and I usually pull that bit of tissue paper back and you can get three leaves off of that. And then if you look in the center, there's a little section with some of the centers of the flowers and it's also got a little section where there are three leaves so you can either leave those on there or if you want you can go in and take all the flowers off and go ahead and unwrap that part and use that as individual leaves as well so once i unpeel this i color it and i colored several with rustic wilderness and then i did one with peeled paint 
So I color it with Distress Ink and I color the stems and the flowers. And if I want them all different colors, a lot of times it's easier just to go through and just spray very quickly with Distress Spray and move on. But sometimes I like to be a little detailed about it. And so I use my water brush and I go in and I paint each flower with the Distress uh, ink. And so I'll go in and do that. And then I'll color the centers with a different color. And of course I have the stems colored as well. And so I color them a little ways down. Now let's get back to when I get these colored green, then I usually cut along where the separations are. And if you leave it round like this, you can just put a little bit of glue on the bottom here. And then I take it and I just put it on the stem and you wanna put it up a little bit like that. And then I just wrap it around so that the glue adheres. And then you can use that as a little leaf like this, whoops. So you can see this one's done. And this one is that center part. So I can just kind of put those together and it's got a little bit of green and some, some blue. This one has a leaf on it. And then these are the same flower, but I put just a little bit when it's open. I take my collage medium and I put it down in the center and then I just slowly squeeze them together and roll them and they kind of make little tulip looking flowers. I think they look like tulips. They could also be rosebuds maybe. And for those I take and the round part I cut it like this into points so that I have pointed leaves that I can put on the tulips and I put a little glue down there same thing put it up and then squeeze it and then you have a long leaf to go with the tulips so there you go encouragement to remember when you're using the bouquet flowers that if you want some leaves there you go you have them right wrapped around the flowers themselves so don't forget about that little bit of tissue paper everything can count well the inside's finished so at the top i have the b i have the vial then the gardening tools held up by the tack nails I added some flowers and the last moss ball, it's still drying. Put the tulip flowers kind of like they're coming out of here, a couple of them down here, and then I added just a little bit more moss in the corners. And I am getting ready to cover it with this. Okay, so once I get this attached and I make sure that it's completely even, on both sides, it's just a tiny bit bigger than the box. So I may go ahead and put a piece or two of craft stock all along the side to go ahead and make sure that it's flush all the way before I add the pink on each side. And then before I attach it to the base, which will be here like this. And I think all the blues and pinks are really cute and very springy and it doesn't have to be Easter at all all this these are my spring colors so I really love it and I'm, I'm just finishing up so I laid this on the tag and I drew around it so that I knew where I needed to match up this area and then I took a few of these and I cut them layered them made sure that they fit on the back of this before I attach them here so that when I put this on and I move it up underneath there, then I also need to measure and make sure it is just one inch away 
and it's one inch away from the bottom so that I know that it's straight. I can also measure on the sides if I want, so I can make sure that it is three quarters of an inch all the way. And I would probably move it just the slightest bit that way. And I think that's a perfect one, one, three quarters and three quarters. And so now I know that it is even on the front. It's also going to match up with this. And if I took some chipboard, it will go right over just like that. So they match up nicely and I can make my little roof that's going to go on there and we're good to go. Well, here's the final finished product. I know that I've been showing it to you all along the way and I know that you are very familiar with the facades now because not only did you see Tim talk about them, but I've talked about them all the way through here. So uh, let's go back to the stacking strips because, you know, I use them all over the place in here. But what I didn't get to show you was the roof, and that was the final thing that I used them for. So when I left off, I had used them to kind of make the back angle for the roof, and then I went ahead and put some chipboard on the top, and I'll be sure and put a photo in here. I don't think that I talked about this uh, when I was making. And so I just have just a piece of chipboard kind of holding it up. And then I just took the strips, cut them all the same length, and then adhered them onto the chipboard. I took, now these are a little wider than the stacking strips. And that's because I used so many of them that all that was left was the outside frame. And I thought, oh my goodness, I, I'm not gonna let these go away. So I just trimmed off right here where they were connected on the frame. And I used these two end pieces as the front of my roof, painted it all gray, and uh, then added some crackle paste and a little bit of ground espresso Distress Crayon, and that's my little garden shed roof. So I think it's just really fun. I had a little interest to the front of the potting shed by stamping it with the new tiny prints. And so I used this stamp uh, sheet and I put the Victorian velvet is the, the color. And then I just kind of, you know, pounced it around to give that a little more interest on the front. And then of course, as you remember, um, I used the stacking strips to make the little crate in the bottom. So much fun. I have our gardening tools. I did the little uh, moss balls with that little bit of turf powder that you can get in the miniature store. I've got my tiny vial with a rub on and then that stamp from the inspector. So it was this diamond stamp that I stamped on there. And then also the, I don't know what this is called, the clover stamp um, that's on here. I don't play cards, so I don't, I don't know those. And then I did put a rub on here and I put a rub on on the front of the crate, but you really can't see it. It got covered up by the facade, which is fine. The tulips and the blue flowers are from the bouquet put the crackle paste on our salvage rabbit and then did that terracotta and picket fence wash on the thimbles and a little iron gate in the back um, and then of course the cute little insect up there and then we have our little leaf on the top and ending it with a compendium of curiosities because this is kind of a compendium of curiosities the gardening version right I love this project. I ended up with a little bit of jute at the top that I added some picket fence distress paint to uh, just kind of tie it in a little bit. And I just, I think this is such a fun project and I, I really love it. I hope you do too. If you have any questions, would like me to clarify anything, please contact me below in the comments or on my blog at playswellwithpaper.blogspot.com. And if you are curious as to any of the items that I used to make this, 
I did post them throughout. They are in the comments of this uh, video and they are also on my blog. So uh, you, you will find all the information there. Thank you so much for following along and I hope that you have a very creative day. Mm -hmm.